each of the robberies, dates and times and location are listed um, to the side here. Um, during a 10-year period, a total of um, 10 aggravated robberies occurred, and one attempted aggravated robbery occurred uh, during that time. The attempted one was actually the third in the series, which was Blackwood. Um, early in the investigation, police established Operation Coy to investigate the series of robberies. All of those robberies have been under active investigation continuously for the last 19 years. And as I say, the timeline is here, and I think we've got a map as well that shows you the sort of spread of where those robberies were. Um, okay, so as you can see, they're spread right across the sort of regional um, outskirts of the metro area um, over 10 years. We believe all of these offences were committed by the same person. That person on each occasion was armed with a Chinese SKK 7.62 rifle, which he used to threaten staff and customers on each occasion. Since 2004, detectives attached to Operation Koi have been relentless in their investigations. <coughs> and as a result of those investigations, on Friday the 13th, detectives attached to Operation Koi arrested a 73-year-old O'Sullivan's Beach man in relation to all 11 offences. A search of the man's home address has uncovered a number of items of address to investigators, including ammunition and six unregistered firearms. One of those firearms is a SKK 7.62 rifle, and that is of particular interest to the investigation. The arrested man has now been charged with 10 aggravated robberies using a firearm and one attempted aggravated robbery using a firearm. He is expected to appear in the <coughs> Magistrates Court on Monday the 16th of October. The arrest on Friday closes another chapter in this long-running investigation and I hope it will go some way to bringing relief to all of the victims who were affected by the fear and trauma of these events <coughs> over the years. Investigators from Operation Coy will be reaching out to each of those victims over the next few days to, um, to make contact with them and check on their welfare. This arrest is a direct result of the collective work of all police officers who have been attached to Operation Coy over the last 19 years. It's an absolute credit to the current investigation team to achieve what we've achieved on Friday. And this investigation proves that St. Paul will never give up. We will be relentless in our search for the truth. Due to the matter now being before the courts, I'm going to be limited as to what I can cite to you in terms of evidence, but I'm happy to take questions. How did you how did you catch this person? Good detective work. <laughs> so, Was there something that led you led you to it? It's really just a collective effort mm -hmm. over a period of time and piecing things together step by step. Um, part of these investigations is we identify persons of interest. Um, generally what we do then is we uh, try it in the loop eliminate them or implicate them further in the investigation. Um, this man was identified as a person of interest and we couldn't eliminate him from our inquiry. We kept implicating the more we investigated and that resulted in the arrest on Friday. Well, how long ago was this man um, a person of interest? Like how long have you been um, tracking him down and known that he could have been the person responsible? This man became a person of interest to the inquiry very recently. Uh, what? Uh what was the, the breakthrough in, in new evidence that prompted police to then um, make the arrest? As I said, I can't go into the actual uh, detail of the evidence because the matter's before the court. Um, but needless to say, we had a combination of forensic evidence, physical evidence, witness evidence, circumstantial evidence, and as I said, just good investigation work to um, confirm our suspicions that um, we had identified and were there new technologies applied to some of that historical evidence for uh, for a breakthrough? We are always uh, looking for opportunities to increase our, our chances of success in investigations. Um, that will become apparent during the court process. And how many people have you ruled out? Of this? <coughs> There's literally been hundreds of people looked at during the 19 years. Um, um, from sort of very loose information coming from Crime Stoppers, which has actually been fantastic over the period of time, Crime Stoppers, 
information uh, right through to some where we got really quite excited that we'd identified the, the vendor. Um, but as I say, as we go through that elimination and implication process, those people were knocked out of the investigation and we just kept with them. They just were, as I said earlier, relentless to find the, the vendor. These crimes have had such a profound <coughs> impact on the victims. What sort of um, uh, result is this today for them? Well, as I say, I think it's a chapter that closes now for victims where they know the police have actually done our job and they've actually um, arrested the, the suspect and placed him before the court. So I think that will give them some comfort um, that the, the person is no longer at large in the community and we've identified who it is. How much uh, money is alleged to have been taken over the, the, the course of the, the last 20 years? Yeah, so it can't be exact numbers, but we estimate it's, it's in excess of a quarter of a million dollars over 10 years. Were there any connection here? Uh, you only targeted ANZ and Bank of SA, all these 11 of these. Did sure. you find any patterns? Like why he targeted these banks? And were, were they easier? Uh, I can't really um, comment on why he did it, um, but I presume it's because of the rural location. Um, he felt that they were a, a safe target for him to, to um, attack. Yeah. Could you talk to us about the nature of this investigation? It's 20 years that it's taken South Australia Police to do this. How unusual is that? What, how would you describe this case? Yeah, it is quite unusual um, because mostly people have offended um, in their past uh, and they've got some history which um, leads them to make mistakes and then police get an opportunity to identify them pretty quickly. This wasn't the case in, in this investigation. Um, this person um, obviously clearly thought um, well through what they were going to do on each offence, planned it, executed it, and escaped um, pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, that was the reason why it's taken us so long. Has there been any other case of similar kind of <coughs> the extent and how long it's gone on for and how long it's taken to capture? Has there been any kind of similar cases in South Australia's history? I think this is probably the longest ongoing serious and organised crime investigation in, in South Australia of this nature. There was some talk in, um, could have been army trained as a result of the weapons that were used during um, the bank robberies. Has this uncovered at all? Um, we haven't uncovered any of information uh, to that effect, but um, without the um, accused background, will come out further during the court process. When was the initial moment that all these bank uh, robberies were initially come together and think, this is the same person who's, who's, who's done these? But the, the fact that it was a, a lone... Um, man on each occasion armed with the Chinese SKK 7.62 rifle. The modus operandi that used on each um, robbery was very, very similar and strikingly similar. And that's why Operation Koi was formed early in the series, because we knew that we potentially had a serial bank robber. Do you know what year, around about, around the early in the investigation? In around 2004. Yeah. Can you talk us through a bit more about Operation Koi? What made it... Um, how did you get to this point now after 20 years finally catching him? What sort of resources and time and um, effort were, were involved in Operation Koi? Look, it's just about reviewing the files and every taking each case apart, looking at it, looking for something that we've missed previously, looking for opportunities that we can get from um, technology or advances um, and just constantly being relentless in our investigation. Just going over the process over and over again until we get a breakthrough. What's been the, the feeling among the detectives and the, and the people that have worked on Operation Koi now that uh, a breakthrough has been made? Like, is, it, is it a sense of relief that we've managed to get to this point? Or obviously there's still a, long, uh, uh, still a judicial process to go, but in terms of the team aspect? Yeah. Um, obviously, people who work on these jobs, what they want to do is solve them. So you can imagine that um, everyone's very, very happy particularly for the victims. Uh, that's, that's what we do. Our job is to keep South Australians safe. And it's good that we've actually identified the person who was uh, making these some, some of these victims feel very unsafe. So uh, I think we've brought closure, as I said earlier, to some of those people, which was, the team are really happy about. Sorry, was there, any other, um, was there any doubt about catching this man? Was there any fears that perhaps he, um, you know, some thought he was dead? Um, yes, those thoughts obviously do enter investigators' mind over a period of time. 19 years is a long time to be chasing one individual, um, but we got that. Was it unusual as well that it was, it was just one individual responsible for this? Were you surprised <coughs> to learn that he didn't have any help? Uh, we've known right from early in the series that it was one individual acting alone. 
Do you know anything about the symbolism of the bikes? I think, it, again, was part of his planning process. It was just a, a method of escape that he employed. Was the bikes, yeah. Was it a smooth arrest in the end? 